In this video, I'm going to teach you how to convert a ketose into a cyclic structure. Now, my assumption is that you watched my previous video and you already know how to convert an aldose molecule into a cyclic structure. If you don't know how to do that, or if you haven't watched this video yet, then what I'm about to do here might be a little bit confusing. If it is, I just encourage you to go back and watch the previous video. The first thing that we're going to do, just like with an aldose, is number our carbon chain, starting from the top, working our way down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the next thing that we'll do is draw our cyclic framework. Now, ketoses turn themselves into five-membered rings, not six-membered rings. So this one is going to look a bit different. This is going to be our five-membered ring. And just like we did with the aldoses, we are going to add these straight line bonds for the carbon atoms that are in the ring. The next thing that we want to do is take our numbers and we want to fill them into the cyclic structure. In a ketose, the um, ring starts with carbon number two on the very right hand point, two, three, four, five. We have not yet filled in carbon number one or carbon number six, but we will come back and do those later. With ketoses, it's going to be easier if we start with carbon number three and carbon number four. Remember with the aldoses, when we were drawing these structures, it was going to be easier for us to start with these guys, the carbon atoms that come after the carbon-oxygen double bond, and that's going to be the case here as well. So we want to start with the carbon atoms that come after the double bond and work on those guys first. Now as a refresher, when this molecule turns itself into a cyclic structure, it does that by turning itself on its side. So any OH groups that are on the right-hand side of the straight chain structure are gonna end up at the bottom pointing down of the cyclic structure. And we'll write that down. So if it's on the right-hand side of the straight chain structure, that means that it ends up pointing down in the cyclic structure. Let's start with carbon number three, again, because we want to start with the carbon atoms that are underneath the carbon-oxygen double bond. So for carbon number three, the OH group is on the left-hand side, that means that it is going to be pointing up in the cyclic structure. And for carbon number four, the OH group is on the right-hand side, which means that it will be pointing down, just like that. Uh, now, just like with the aldoses, when we get to carbon number five, the very last carbon here, things get a little bit funny. With carbon number five, the hydrogen atom is always going to be sticking down. That's always going to be the case. And sticking up at the top, that's going to be our CH2OH that has carbon number six in it. What about the oxygen atom on carbon number five? That's the oxygen atom that's inside the ring right there. So we don't have to worry about whether the um, oxygen atom, the OH group on carbon number five is pointing to the left or pointing to the right. It is always going to be the oxygen atom in the ring. So here's our carbon number two. Carbon number two um, is the one that has the carbon oxygen double bond. And how does that end up over here in this cyclic structure? Well, just like we saw with the previous example, the OH group or the oxygen atom uh, for carbon number two can end up sticking either in the up position or the down position. We're gonna get two versions. Sometimes it ends up sticking up. Sometimes, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sometimes the OH group ends up sticking up. Sometimes the OH group ends up sticking down. So we wanna draw both of those different options. Sometimes the OH group is up, sometimes it's down. When the OH group is pointing down on carbon number two, then that means we have carbon number one sticking up, CH2OH, there is our carbon number one. If the OH group is sticking up, then that means our carbon number one, CH2OH, will be sticking down in the down position. There's that guy right there. We do still have uh, the alpha and beta notation that we can use for these two different anomers right here, and it is exactly the same. We're gonna look at this carbon atom right here, the carbon that's on the very right-hand point of the ring, and we're going to identify the position of the OH group. The position of the OH group is pointing down, so that means that this is an alpha anomer, uh, and we just throw that right into the front of the name. So this molecule is alpha L sorbose, and it is alpha specifically because this OH group is pointing down. The other version we call the anomer is beta L sorbose, and it is the beta anomer because the OH group on carbon number two is sticking up. And if you got kind of lost with the L sorbose part, that's just the name of this monosaccharide.